the sea of sin, going down for the last time, when you called upon his name, he reached down his nail-scarred hand, and he lifted to our Sunday School Time, studying the Word of God today. We're still in the Gospels, just uh, really introducing the Gospel stories and trying to put them uh, together uh, as one uh, Gospel account. And just uh, today we're going to focus again on the humanity of Christ. Last time we talked about Jesus as a boy in his adolescence just the the rich character that flowed out of him the character of god because he was uh, already being influenced by the holy spirit of god and just in constant fellowship and communication with the father he knew his purpose and all of those wonderful things we saw last time but now we're focusing on jesus uh and, and as he has grown up he has he has uh, now been presented to uh, israel as their messiah by john and he's now going to be tempted. And uh, this is so important, the temptation of Christ, because it, it proves several things. And, uh, and it also is a wonderful example for us. We're going to look at that this morning. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll pray and ask God to bless. And then we'll get into God's word. Father, we thank you for the uh, time in your word today. Will you please be our teacher? And Holy Spirit, speak to the hearts of every person today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're looking at the humanity of Christ and uh, his temptation in the wilderness. And, uh, and so in, in Matthew and Mark, uh, chapter number four, they actually parallel each other, uh, almost verse by verse, uh, paralleling uh, one another in this account. But I want to start off, first of all, in Hebrews chapter four, verse 15. And uh, the temptation of Christ is very important. Uh, to show that Jesus, he was, uh, you know, he was a man. He was a, uh, a, a air breathing, food eating, uh, you know, a man that sweat, that got tired, that, uh, uh, you know, he was, he was tempted as well. And that's what we're going to see. Hebrews 4 verse 15 says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the filling of our infirmities, so those two knots cancel each other out. So it'd be like saying we have a high priest who has been touched with the feelings of our infirmity. Okay, so but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. 
Jesus was tempted like as we are, yet without sin. And so had not Jesus uh, been a man, lived uh, the life of uh, mankind, been tempted as a man and resisted temptation, he could not only not have been our Savior, he could not have been our high priest. Jesus could not be the one who faithfully represents us to God as our high priest. So this is so important, his temptation. Matthew chapter 4, verse number 1 and 2. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward unhungered. And Luke 4, 1 and 2. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan as was, and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And so, you know, this shows the conditions around the temptation of Christ. He, uh, he was being led by the Spirit into the wilderness to fast, and he was being led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. Uh, in, in James, um, the book of James, it chapter 1, it talks about uh, temptation and, and that God does not tempt any man with evil. But God does use our adversary. He does use Satan uh, in this respect to bring temptation unto us. And uh, Satan tempts with evil. Satan tempts in that respect. And I don't understand all of that. I don't understand exactly how. Uh, it all works out, but God, he has a purpose in it, and uh, certainly in this purpose, it was to show and validate who Jesus was. Jesus, um, he went through uh, every temptation that any man goes through. Not specifically, you know, some people are tempted uh, in specific areas, which, you know, we, we may not, or we couldn't mention every area that people are tempted with sin. But in these general areas uh, where everyone is tempted with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, that's where Jesus was tempted in, uh, in this temptation. And so, you know, many of us, we are tempted with sin daily. Uh, obviously, uh, lost people are tempted with sin. Saved people are also tempted with sin as well, and it's a constant battle. And it's something that's common to every man. But here what we have is a Savior who is also our high priest, and he is the one who has conquered every temptation. He went through temptation uh, just as we have, and he conquered every one. Uh, Jesus, by not giving in to the temptation of the devil, he proved his authority. He proved who he was, that he... Uh, was and is the Son of God. He was and is the Creator. He would not be mastered by uh, by Satan. He would not be, you know, he he would not be controlled by the creature. He is the one who controls. And uh, Jesus, he also proves his authenticity as being the Son of God. And and you know, we'll see this temptation. He's saying, "If thou be the Son of God," he also shows his absolute dependence upon the Holy Spirit. And that's what Jesus did. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. And so by being filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, he had all the faculty to resist the temptation. And, and it shows us that this is not a example that we could never uh, follow. This is an example that we can follow because we have the Holy Spirit of God living in us and we can be and we're commanded to be filled with the Spirit. And so here we can rejoice that we have a sinless Savior. We can rejoice that he passed uh, every test and he conquered every temptation. And then we can rejoice that we have an example of the one man who did resist temptation in every single way. Now, we're going to look at uh, the first temptation uh, that the devil brought towards Jesus today. And then, and then in the next lesson, we'll, we'll move on to the next one, okay? So here is talking about the first temptation, and that is the devil came unto him and said, If thou be the Son of God, 
command that these stones be made bread. So he's saying after Jesus was hungered, after Jesus had fasted 40 days, and I, I can't imagine uh, you know, what, what that is. Uh, and, and, uh, but Jesus, he was, it says he was hungered. And I think he was probably hungered to the point of starvation. And, and this temptation is, is real. And he's saying, if you're the son of God, go ahead, eat. Command these stones be made bread. You can do that. And uh, so this temptation here uh, is showing us, first of all, that no one is immune from temptation. Um, even the son of God was not immune from temptation. He faced it. He had to face it. And uh, so, you, you know, it's really prideful for us to think that we're above being tempted. Uh, maybe for uh, some people to think that we are perfect. Uh, we can attain unto a place where we're perfect and just not even tempted with sin. That's Really, that's uh, ludicrous to think that. In 1 John chapter 1, verse number 8, it says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Verse 10, if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. And, and so for us to think that we're above temptation is just really prideful. Uh, God, he is the escape from temptation, the way out, and God wants us to trust him in this respect. And so uh, uh, secondly, Satan tempts us uh, most severely at some predictable times. And I, I think we can see here that uh, some aspects of this first of all you know there's times when we have victory in our lives when I mean we're at just a pinnacle uh, we're glad uh, you know something wonderful has happened in our life and and Jesus he had just been announced by John as being the Messiah he was baptized the Holy Spirit uh, lands upon him and, and he's just filled with the Holy Spirit and and uh, but then he's being led into the wilderness and you know, when we're glad, we're distracted, we are on that mountaintop, if you want to call it that, um, that's when Satan, he's going to come with an attack. He's going to attack us uh, because that's a point of where, you know, we're, we're distracted or maybe or we're prideful and thinking, you know, we, we've attained to this uh, place in our life, but not so. Uh, it's because of God. It, it also shows us that during hard times, uh, we will uh, be tempted by the devil. And, and Jesus, he, you know, he was out in the wilderness for 40 days. He had been fasting, and it, it was a hard, hard thing for him to do. He was hungry. He was, you know, I mean, he was at the point of, of starvation here. And in times when we are just really in an in intense place where we need help and we need God, that's when Satan's going to tempt. And, and uh, when we're tired, when we're sad, when we're mad, when... Uh, you know, there's the emotions are just really running wild in, in our life. That's when Satan's going to tempt us uh, uh, to to sin and to trust, uh, you know, in in uh, our our own flesh and ourselves. And then when we're you know preparing to serve God, when we're uh, you know we we've gotten our mind, we're committed to serve the Lord. You know what? That's when Satan's going to tempt. When you say, yes, I, I am, my mind's made up. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to live for the Lord. I'm going to be faithful in this area. We can expect that that's when Satan's going to bring temptations. He's going to try to prevent us. And you know, God, he's trying to prepare us. God is trying to purify us. But Satan, uh, he hates us and he wants us to fail. Well, can we prepare for temptation? Yes. Yes, we can. Jesus here, he was filled with the Spirit of God. And uh, that is one of the ways where we can prepare for temptations is by being filled with the Holy Spirit of God. In fact, we're commanded in Ephesians 5, 18 to be filled with the Spirit. In Galatians 5, verse 16, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. God wants us to be filled with the Spirit and following the Spirit of God, walking in the Spirit of God, we're commanded to. And, uh, you know, one of the best ways for us to uh, be uh, following and filled with the Spirit or really, uh, I guess, an evidence of that is that we're, you know, we are uh, communing, uh, communicating with God. We are memorizing God's Word. I mean, we're thinking upon God's Word. We have uh, just uh, a song in our heart and... Uh, uh, we're submitted to the Holy Spirit. We're trusting 
the promises of God, the Word of God. We're accepting and yielding to Him. And, uh, you know, there's uh, at a place where there's nothing between our soul and the Savior. Well, Satan attacks us, and he begins his attack with doubt. See, what is not of faith is sin, okay? And so God, he's wanting us to follow him in faith. Well, Satan is going to attack us with doubt, uh, first of all. He says, if thou be the Son of God. If you are the Son of God, prove it to me that you're the Son of God by doing this. And that's just temptation there, right, right there in its richest form. Prove it, you know, if, if you are all that you say you are. You say you're this Christian. You say you're this and that. Uh, just prove it. Well, you know what? God, He will bring testing into our life to help us be uh, proved before Him as faithful and, and, and righteous and, and just as He has called us to be and all of that. But Satan, He's saying, well, you just prove who you are by doing what I want you to do. You know, it's almost like uh, the guys who say, well, if you, you know, prove how tough you are by doing this or prove how strong you are by doing that. It's always a trap, always a trap. Don't fall into that. And so it begins with doubt. Also, Satan's attacks, uh, they, they come in uh, pride. They attack, he attacks with pride. And when he says, if thou be the son of God, we, you know, we could say it like this, since you're the son of God, okay? Hey, you, you're the son of God. Do you, you know who you are? Uh, you are, you're, you're all of this, and you know, you are the, um, you're the king of kings. Now, maybe those are some things that we're reading into and implying, but I think that's another way that Satan, uh, he can attack us is with pride. And, you know, God says pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Uh, God resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. And so, you know, anytime we're tempted to follow in pride or react with pride or react because of, of pride, watch out. That's a temptation of the devil. And, uh, and so, you know, maybe he's saying here, you've got rights, you've got privileges, you've got power, you've got all of these things. Why don't you claim it? Why don't you re reach out and grab that? And, uh, you know, that is a temptation of Satan. He's saying, you do this. You, you step out. And really, it's a, uh, a temptation to become independent of God and uh, independent of, of the Holy Spirit and the Father's will and all of that. And that is the heart of sin. That, that's, the, you know, that's what sin is at its very core, is for us to leave God's way, uh, stop following God or stop waiting on Him. You know, Abraham, he was given the promise that, that you know, God was going to provide a child and uh, they got ahead of God. They didn't wait on God. And, and uh, you know, it happened with Abraham. It happened with Moses, I think, you know. And, and uh, he probably knew what he was supposed to do. But he said, I'm going to go deliver the Israel by killing this Egyptian. And, and uh, you know, it, it just turns out wrong anytime that we trust in our own flesh and, and act independently of God. And that's, you know, that's what this commanding the stones uh, into bread was to, to Jesus was trusting in the flesh or trusting in the fleshly uh, rather than trusting in God and so Jesus he combats that and uh, and another way that uh, you know what temptation is attacking is is the way that, it, that uh, uh, Satan is trying to uh, trick us into thinking that you know God he's the really you know God's the one who is causing you pain God's the one who's causing you uh, any type of suffering or God's the one who is preventing you from having what you want and that's how the temptation comes is is you know to think that uh, I, I'll be loyal to God as long as God is loyal to me as long as God provides what I want when I want that's when I'll be loyal to God. And that, that's just a temptation, a uh, fleshly temptation to, to follow after lust instead of following after what God wants. Now, Jesus, he uses scripture as his defense. You know, man, he says, shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Every word of God is what we are to live by and not by bread alone. And uh, so Jesus, he used scripture as to his defense. You know, he says, as it is written, as it is written. And, uh, and so some scriptures that we could use and, and put into our mind 
uh, Psalm 119, verse number 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. And verse 11, thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Hiding God's word in our heart, it is going to, uh, it's going to give us the strength to, to combat the temptations of the devil. Psalm 119, 93, I will never forget thy precepts, uh, he says there. I will never forget thy precepts, for with them thou hast quickened me. Remembering, where do we get our life from? Where does the strength that we have come from? In ourselves? No, the strength, the power, it, it's not of us. It's of God. So I will not forget your precepts, God. I will not forget your word. Psalm 119, 104. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. And we need to love God, uh, you know, and, and love his word and trust his word and hide his word in our heart. That's the defense that we have against the temptation of Satan. And uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 1 and 2 says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You know, that's our position in Christ, that we are dead from sin, separated from sin. Sin is not to have any effect upon us uh, because we are dead to it. And, uh, you know, any sin that's present in your life, in God's word, we need to use and uh, apply in our heart and our life to uh, combat, to fight against that temptation of Satan. And, uh, you know, does God want us to continue in sin? No. Think about this. We need to. This is a good verse to memorize and commit to our memory. And and uh, you know, if if you struggle with a sin, or maybe there's an area of temptation, a place uh, where Satan is going to tempt you, he has before. He'll do it again. Plug that in there. Shall we continue any longer in this particular sin? God forbid. No. God wants us to have victory. God wants us to, not to make excuses. He wants us to make preparations. Victory comes when we focus on the spiritual. You know what Satan's wanting to do? He's wanting to get our mind. He's wanting to get our thoughts, our affections on things on this earth. He's wanting to get our, uh, you know, our heart and all that just focused on the things that are right here on this earth, things that are fleshly, things uh, you know, that appeal to our lust. And he wants us to forget about heaven, forget about the uh, the, the Savior who died for us. Forget about His sacrifice and forget about uh, all the things that are eternal and think about the things that are right here and now in the flesh. Colossians 3, verse number 1 says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, for Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for ye are dead. Again, he says, uh, just like in Romans chapter 6, he says you're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. And so you're dead to sin. You, you, you know, we are separated from this world. Uh, uh, you know, our, our affections don't need to be on this world. They need to be on God, upon things that are eternal and things that are forever. That's what's going to give us the, 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 the ammunition really to combat uh, the temptations that will come and that do come. And so God wants us to walk in victory. He tells us in 1 Corinthians, you know, verse uh, chapter 15, that man, we are, uh, we have the victory uh, to, through the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God for that. We have the victory, and so we need to know we have the victory, and we need to walk in the victory. Victory comes when we focus and we study uh, on the Word of God and every word of God. You realize Satan, what he does is he he tempts, and later on his temptations are going to be twisting and you know uh, twisting the word of god and uh you know satan's qu he quotes scripture he quotes it wrong uh he takes it out of the context that god gave it in but he he you know he twisted god's words and he uh you know he called god a liar and he said you know god uh is is lying to you he did that to eve and he's trying to do that now to uh to jesus here and uh but you know, if we want the victory, we need to really dive into every word, study every word of God. And um, 
2 Timothy 3, verse 16 tells us that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. And uh, we just need to get in the Word of God and uh, understand, you know. I mean, it's not just reading it um, just, to, just to go through and read a passage, but really to uh, read and understand and comprehend so that God is really helping us, and that's what we need. And then, uh, last of all, victory comes when we learn uh, and we live by the Word, every word. When we learn the Word of God and when we live, really when we apply it. And that's how faith works. It's kind of a, a, a play on words, faith words, because faith does, you know. Faith is something that changes us. Faith it, it is, it is something that produces a work in our life. And, uh, you know, faith, it's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's believing God and trusting God for what God has promised or what God has commanded. And it's leaving the results up to the Lord. But, you know, faith, it, it's, uh, it's also an action. It's stepping out. And faith is evidenced by action. Let me say it that way. Faith is evidenced by action. So faith is not a work. But faith is followed by works. Faith is followed by action and uh, believing God and doing what God has said. And uh, that, you know, that's what Jesus is saying here. Man shall not live by bread alone. He's not going to live by the flesh. He's not going to live by the strength that's in the flesh. He's going to live by the strength of the Spirit of God. He's going to walk in the Spirit of God. And he's going to receive every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And that's how we're going to live. And that's what he's talking about, live. And uh, our life is hid with Christ and God. And so the life which we now live right here, the life that we are living in this flesh, in this body, in, on this earth right now, uh, if we're going to make a, a difference uh, for eternity, and if we are going to um, you know, fight against the temptations that are going to come, it's going to, to take the Lord. I need God. I need his uh, strength every single moment, and uh, you do too. You need the strength of the Lord in your life. You need the word of God uh, hidden and locked into your heart, and we need to follow the Lord more now more than ever. And so I want to encourage you as we uh, have looked at this temptation uh, of Christ, this first one, uh, let's, uh, you know, let's not trust in this flesh because in our flesh we can do nothing. We need the strength of the Lord. So. Uh, God bless you. Until next time.